Hey friends, thank you so much, Gabby. Appreciate the toss. I'm over here now with Ifya Shocks, as you might know her on stage. Esports royalty, quite and simply put. First of all, thank you for hanging out. It's it's good to see you. <laughs> wow, you're gonna just drop that bomb on me. <laughs> so uh, that's a really generous way to describe me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey man, we 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 all we all climb the same ladder. I understand. You know, it's 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 fun to be where you're at and. Let's start specifically with where you're at here. We're talking here on the Esports Awards, and you've been the host here for a number of years. Uh, this is your third year, I think, mm -hmm. kind of hosting the Esports Awards. So give me, a, give me a little bit of background, what it's been like over the past couple of years, any highlights you've had. Um, in general, it's been really cool to be part of the esports awards. I think it's one of those things that is necessary for uh, kind of the esports business. And I also really appreciate that every year the show um, gets improved on, be it behind the scenes. I've also had the pleasure of being of the panel, uh, but also in terms of the shows and the production. And, um, you know, we're in front of a big hurdle with everything being remote this year, but still going to make it work. Uh, and as far as Cool moments go. Um, winning personality of the year a couple of years ago was really, really cool. Uh, I really hope I can add some more trophies to my collection soon. Um, also, there was the specific moment. I think it was the last time we were in London, so two years ago, where Frankie Ward was, um, she was presenting an award and she had this hilarious little speech about um, I don't know if I can say, but like tit tape to hold the dress up or whatever. <laughs> it was really great. And it was really off the cuff. Um, and it's also awesome that she is nominated, of course, now this year. Um, and for the rest, yeah, a lot of good times and just something that I will miss a little bit this year being the fact that you just get to hang out and talk to people from the industry and just get the, their thoughts on the year. Um, but hopefully we can do that digitally this time around. I feel that uh, Frankie is one of the more just straight up like human people in the industry. You strike me very, very similar. We, we've kind of just met each other and you're just real cool, calm, collected. I mean, is that something that you bring with you when you host the stage? You're just just yourself. Yeah, that's a good that's a good question, actually. And I think all of us when we start out, um, I mean, I, I, I don't know how it is for you, but not that many of us have had like formal training, like, I don't know, theater training or hosting or whatnot. You know, most of us just kind of rolled in and follow our dreams. <laughs> and um, in the beginning, I think I was very conscientious about being this on stage personality who is shocks and uh, not to show too much of kind of the other part. But I feel like over the years, it has molded into one. And I am someone who enjoys like slapstick, stupid hu humor. Uh, sometimes I am the kind of person who can burst into big emotions, you know, be it sad, be it happy, be it everything. And I, I do try and sprinkle that in. But yeah, I keep, I keep it real, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's there it is. I'm from New York. That's the language I understand. Keeping it real. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's I think that's part of the charm, though. You know, we talk about moving to this digital world and uh, simply put, I don't think everybody could do it. It's really it's hard to do the job no matter what. But when you're on yeah. stage and you can look at people and and point to people and maybe even touch people, that's a different world versus just the camera. But you still bring the energy, the excitement, the personality, perhaps first and foremost. So what have you done to, to really transition from the, the, the offline world to this this Zoom call of an esports industry? <laughs> Um, well, I don't know. It's been, it's been really challenging. I, I have to say, like, especially in this year, um, I didn't realize, well, I always realize it, but it's one of those things that you don't realize what you have until it's gone being the audience interaction. And especially for me as a host slash interviewer, um, kind of feasting off the reactions of the players that you're interviewing or the people that you're talking to, as well as kind of being in the green room with everybody where emotions can fly high and you can really get to things that you wouldn't necessarily get to like you do now when you're just kind of on a discord call and you can't really feel the emotion that much uh, as much and i've really had to adjust to that i found it incredibly difficult uh when we did a couple of the lec shows from right here <laughs> to feel the same intensity and I, I mean we've seen it with the players as well right many have said i need the pressure or I'm doing much better without the pressure. So I think everyone kind of has to adjust. But uh, the th fact of the matter is, I think we're going to be in this situation for a long time. So we're all going to have to adjust. So my best wishes to everyone in, in our positions who kind of have to pull off the same without having the crowd interaction behind us. I feel that. I, I wear shoes. I find if I wear shoes, I'm more like 
in the work mode, right? Because oh, I just walk just around. Pants. There you go. Everybody's got something, and that's <laughs> that's what matters, you know. Bringing bringing your own thing here, but uh, you know, speaking of shoes, I wanted to kind of talk about your your fashion. So I'm a big fashion nerd. I love looking good. I love when people this look good, segue, and that's wow. something that you do very very well. Okay. Uh, last year, last year you were you're you always show up uh, dressed to the nines when it comes to either worlds or over here at esports awards. Do you have any imp- – do you know what you're going to be wearing for the eSports Awards tonight, this time around, at home? I actually – I was about to go into a panic attack because I – so I was remembering last year. It was actually so stressy. So I had not – for some reason, I had not thought about, uh, like, both the dress I was going to wear for the finals for the World Championship, which was two weeks before that, as well as, like, needing another gala-type fancy dress for uh, – for the esports awards, and I remember I was just really stressed because I was ordering these things, and then I ended up I was in Paris, and I people were like, oh, go to these stores, and then the only dresses they had there were like five thousand euros <laughs> or more, and it's like, I know I want to look good, but do I want to look that good? Um, then I had people sending me stuff, I was borrowing stuff, but turns out that in America, um, this is like their bread and butter because of the proms and everything. So once I got mm. there, I just went to like this. Uh, one store and it was just full of wonderful dresses and I ended up picking up the red one which I thought made me look a little bit like a lady Christmas but I thought well we're far enough off from Christmas that I can pull off the red dress um, so yeah and I was thinking actually this year of going for a suit um, going for like a nice black suit with maybe a popping top and some high heels just to switch it up here's a hard yeah. pivot though something big different for you your music debut <laughs> dance with me uh, Literally dance with me But also let's talk about your music debut What just I don't really have a question The floor is yours Talk to yeah. me about dance with me uh, Dance with me Yeah I mean I guess I can say I'm a recording artist <laughs> <laughs> It's just so crazy um, Like full disclosure I am like a shower singer I guess like many people are And there's like you know, I'm not someone who can hold any tone. There's just, like, a certain <laughs> tone that I can do okay with. So, luckily, they let me sing in that. Um, but I remember I got this email from kind of the LEC business dev department, and they're like, oh, we have this project. It's a song. You know, Electronic was something that existed for, uh, I guess, a year now already. I was like, yeah, sure. And then they were like, so, listen, the caveat is, one, you have to sing. Two, it's like a four-day video shoot. There's styling and fittings. And four, you guys need to take – dance classes for a month and a half like six hours a week <laughs> and I was like let's do it I'm in uh, <laughs> I used to dance a lot so I would definitely like the dance part but still nice. it was it was really stressful a lot went into it and I think it shows and I think that's also kind of the why these things work from the side of the LEC is because even if it's kind of silly it's done professionally and we like give it our all and then even if it's bad or like even if it's cringy it'll be a good cringe right <laughs> that's what you want good cringe so i think that worked so yeah, yeah. where's my grammy <laughs> <laughs> i feel that the grammy it's it's you gotta do eurovision first and then you'll be eligible for the grammy but that's the uh no i'm glad you brought that up the the like level of of dedication because Every esports outfit, whether it's a team or, or a developer, they all try to do this stuff, and it's always like kind of like, ha- you, you know, like halfway there, not all in, and that was really all in. You know, you talked about a four day shoot and, and the dancing and everything. Can you expand on like the level of work that is? Because like I've done, I've had the opportunity to do like music, and I don't think people realize how much work and effort it is to pull something like that off. Yeah, there's a lot of work, and uh, I think a lot for us, but especially the people who were cutting and making the video on a very short turnaround, uh, the audio engineers, for instance, because it's not a gift to have to work (laughs) with our voices, uh, all of that. And also, there was this really short turnaround because we dropped uh, the, we had a rap battle video come out too, which dropped. Remember that one? Yeah, two weeks before. So that was when we were already training for the LEC Tronic, Electronic. Plus, it was end of the season, so playoffs were on the horizon. So for a period of, I think, six weeks, there was no, there was no time for anything. Um, the rap battle lyrics were kind of written by ourselves, kind of, and then we went into the studio and recorded them in one day, I remember, and the day after uh, the dance classes continued. And that was also really difficult because learning a skill 
that you then have to do kind of professionally for a video from the ground up is very difficult. And I had the pleasure of, I had a bass in dance, but the boys, the other casters had never had any professional <laughs> training and like th th their faces like the first week, this, I mean, I have a vlog up about it, but it was so funny, but it was still so inspirational to see that they just did it, you know, and they're not world-class dancers, but they made it work. And, um, it's pretty crazy. And I think because of the online era, more people are taking a bit more risks in terms of content and just kind of seeing what sticks. And I like that. And I hope that can be uh, an example, but again, I didn't come up with any of it. I just did my work and then the people behind the scenes uh made it into what it is we've talked a lot about what you do on stage and whatnot what do you do especially now with with quarantine and and, and how the world works right now what have you been doing off screen for for for, for if you to just make the day go on <laughs> uh, it's a good question i mean i don't know about you but like that's kind of the worst. The fact that no matter what you do, you're in between these four walls, you know, and sometimes <laughs> yeah. it's just, oh, I, I live in a pretty small apartment. I just actually, normally my laundry is right there drying, but I moved it like <laughs> here. So you, you're not able to see my uh, clean underwear drying. <laughs> I'm sure there's a market for that. Wait, okay, never mind. Anyway. Um, <laughs> We'll you talk believe, afterwards. We'll get it done. Yeah, I would believe the Instagram DMs I get when, like, the laundry's out. Don't <laughs> you worry. Um, but no. Uh, yeah, I've been playing a lot of TFT, actually. So there's TFT Mobile that came out. I just love sitting on the couch there and just, like, binging um, specific topics on YouTube. Like, I got very interested in kind of historical podcasts. Uh, I have a history or a background in history, but more so about, like, possible lost civilizations and You're um, kidding. yeah it's really weird i don't know why but i find it super super fascinating um just kind of looking i've always been fascinated by how history kind of repeats itself a lot right and and mm -hmm. looking at the past to frame the future um but yeah listening to podcasts playing tft wearing the same pajamas for five days in a row until i have to change into an interview like this uh it's all part of the game <laughs> No, it's funny. I, I I wasn't making fun. I was like, you're kidding me, because that's literally what I've been doing. Listening really? to like like what happened in the Macedonians and then things yes. like that. Yes. yes. Is there a lost civilization in the Amazon that like we're you know gonna find more traces? Of? I know. Yeah. I'm with you. Right. It's it, it's funny. You're like you you spend all this time trying to get out of school and 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 do the things you love, and now you're doing the things you love, and you're like, what if I just spent all day learning? Like, what if that yeah. was the thing? That yeah, yeah. Why, why, how about I read books, you know, which I think oh. more people should do, like go offline and read a book. Uh, it's amazing what it like does to kind of your brain because we're so used to being on the screen and on the phones and being clued in. It's kind of nice to have a physical copy of a book. Uh, so, yeah. With that said, you know, like I said, you're, you're fantastic at what you do. You've got a fantastic resume, 10 years in the industry between League of Legends and, and Esports Awards, etc. I mean, the only question is, What's next for Shocks? Yeah, it's uh, that's kind of the question that keeps me up at night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, to be honest, like I guess in the beginning of all this, I thought I'm so excited that I can work in the esports field and in gaming in general. But like, we'll see. But in the last couple of years, it's really gone into nah. You know, this is where I belong, and I don't really. People are always like, oh, you could go to bigger, and then they use the word like bigger and better things. I mean, I'm sure you could get a job in traditional TV, and it's like. I don't really want that. You know, this is this is the future. This is kind of, you know, the online broadcasting world, the content that is being created, the closeness to the audience, the excitement that esports brings and that will continue bringing and it's not going to go anywhere, um, not just because of the pandemic, but also um, technological advances. It's going to be AR, it's going to be VR, it's going to be everything. Um, it's going to be more than it was even five years ago, of course. Uh, so I don't really know what's next. If anything, um, I don't know, I want to diversify a bit more in terms of kind of trying new events and meeting new communities within esports as well as outside of it, because I think it's important to keep evolving. And I worked so long with Riot Games exclusively, and they have productions down to a T. Like, th there's rarely anything that can go wrong. And that also made me become stagnant and be like, well, why, you know, where are my impulses? Because everything is always decked out here. And that's also why I went freelance two years ago. You know, I want to do different things. I want to work with different production companies and find solutions and, and develop kind of that 
production side of myself as well. So it's probably what I'm going to keep pushing for. I, I I love it. You are you're singing the exact song that I that that I I, I love hearing and sing myself. So <laughs> ten thousand points for for everything. Shocks. I just want to thank you so much for the time that you've spent here. It's been uh, an honest, absolute pleasure getting a chance to meet you and and have the conversation. So thanks again for your time. Good luck in everything you do, and we'll see you on awards night. Yeah, see you on awards night. Thank you very much. Shine light.